This game might genuinely be better than anything COD Zombies has put out recently. And that game is Skur Ritual. Skur Ritual is a Call of Duty Zombies-like game developed by Wales Interactive. A team consisting of about 4-5 to five people from everything I've read, and is a spiritual successor to their game made of Skur. Now, Wales Interactive has been around for a little bit of time, and they have made quite a few games. Most of their games in their catalog do consist of live-action, story-driven games. While not my cup of tea, Skur Ritual definitely is. Skur Ritual takes place after the bad ending of Made of Skur. This game was released back in Early Access in October of 2022, but recently got a full 1.0 release in April of 2024 for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. And this game is genuinely a ton of fun to play. And I genuinely think it might be better than anything COD Zombies has put out recently, pretty much anything after Cold War. Now, why do I say that? Well, let's dive into what this game is, starting off with its price point. Skur Ritual is going to cost you about 25 US dollars to buy into. And for that price point, I think you get a ton of content, and there's a lot of hours of fun to be had here. There is a special or more enhanced edition of the game you could purchase for more money, but that only gives you extra DLC cosmetics. Nothing you can purchase in Skur Ritual gives you any extra benefit, it just gives you unique items that you can utilize or wear. It doesn't give you any game-changing items, which is a really positive thing that I like to see in games now, where you can't just buy in early and have absolutely everything you might need. It's not a pay-to-win game, and I really do appreciate that from these developers. So for $25, you get four brand new maps that are basically round-based zombies. I say brand new because it's nothing that we've had in COD Zombies, and if you didn't play the early access version of this game, this is all going to be brand new to you. And all of these maps are genuinely a ton of fun to play, though they do have some little different quirks about them, like the first map has a lot of more open areas, and the second map has a lot of really tight corridors. So depending on what type of play style you want to play as, do you want to just train and hoard and camp in a single area you can do that but on the second map the skur hotel you're gonna have to run around a lot more to try to have the enemies go in a certain direction that you want because there's not too many camping spots or good training spots you're gonna have to run around a lot of the map in some of these areas which is genuinely a fun change there's a good variety of maps here and all of them are a ton of fun to play so like I said, this is basically akin to Call of Duty Zombies. It's very similar in the way the game premise is set up in how you go about playing each map. You spawn in, you have a starting weapon and a melee, and you go from there. You try to kill enemies called the Quiet Ones, which are basically zombies. They wield melee weapons. Some of them have special abilities or unique quirks about them, but through and through, you're basically killing zombies trying to survive the rounds, go as high as you can, or complete the objectives of each map. The point system is much like Cold War. You don't get points per hit on an enemy, you get points per kill. So certain weapons that have a high fire rate, or weapons that have higher damage output but slower fire rate, are going to be just as useful to you as long as they can kill the enemies. Gone are the days of having to use a really weak weapon just so you can build up points. I know it's a point of contention in the COD Zombies community with that point system change, but I honestly like it because it makes every weapon at least somewhat viable because you're not kind of forced to use bad weapons just to build up points in the early rounds. So like I said, you spawn in, try to survive the waves. Very similar to COD Zombies, there are weapons you can buy in the spawn, there are perks, there's a pack-a-punch type machine, a bunch of different things you can do throughout these maps. As you go through the maps, you'll find unique things that you can do and progress the story of the map. The first main objective that you're going to have is going to basically be a guided walkthrough through their main easter egg. There's going to be objective markers and text on screen that helps you out with playing this map and getting it to completion with the final boss fight. It genuinely is kind of nice, at least as a first time player for some of these maps, to have the map kind of tell you what to do or at least guide you in a way so it feels like even new players can come into this game and still feel like they know what they're doing i myself completed the literal first map the cursed lands of lavernock on my first try playing the demo of the game and then on my first try when i purchased the full version of the game 
So the actual main objective on each of the maps isn't super difficult or convoluted because the game does kind of walk you through it, but it's still a ton of fun to play. But for those that really like the hunt of an easter egg like Call of Duty Zombies, the main quest isn't the end all be all for the map. Once you complete the main set of objectives, you have the option to continue on doing the other portion of the easter egg, but that section is completely unguided. It gives you no pointers, objective markers, or on-screen text to help you figure out what you need to do. So it's really on you as the player and the community as a whole to figure out what the objectives are and how you gotta complete it. I really like that change of pace because in Call of Duty Zombies, traditionally there is one main quest that will end in some sort of a boss fight or main climax that will essentially end the map or you'll get a good reward and be resent back to the map with all the perks or good upgrades or something along that nature. Whereas this game doesn't tell you everything you need to do. If you're a very casual player, you can be content just doing the first set of steps, doing the main quest, getting the achievement for that. But if you're a completionist or somebody that really wants to test their skill, you can try to figure all this out on your own. I haven't done all the hardcore easter eggs on the other maps, but at least on the first map, you can relatively figure this out on your own. It's not super complicated in the fact of you're going to need to know Morse code or binary and things of that nature, but you will need to use your brain a little bit to complete these objectives. I really enjoy that about this game that does give you a little bit of a challenge after you do what is essentially that guided easter egg quest. So we have something that the COD Zombies community generally likes, which is easter egg hunts, but what about the core gameplay? Well I'm pleased to say that the core gameplay in and of itself is also very good. Maybe not on par with modern COD games as those developers have had time to tune and perfect their craft, but this game is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. You have your basic mechanics that you would expect in a first person shooter, such as sprinting, meleeing, and sliding and the game does feel responsive and good. I will admit when I first played the demo I thought it was pretty clunky and maybe didn't feel as responsive as it should, but the developers have constantly been pushing out patches for performance updates, things of that nature, so the game feels better with every update. There is still some improvements that could be made, but it doesn't feel bad, so I wouldn't really fret about that too much. You have, like I said, your basic melee, grenades, things of that nature, but your grenade isn't like it was in COD Zombies where you get two per round. In this game, it's a Molotov type thing. It does some explosive and fire damage, and it is on a cooldown timer, so you don't just get two per round with the option to buy more, it just regenerates over time. You also have an ultimate type ability, which does different things depending on what miracle setup you use. I will get into what miracles are in just a few moments here. So you have different options for what kind of build you want to do while you're playing Skur Ritual. You can do something that you really want to prioritize getting doors open and getting things for cheaper, or you can do some things that really incentivize you getting critical hits on zombies by aiming for the head. That's where miracles come into play here. There's a variety of different gods, as I will call them, I don't know exactly what they're called in-game, that you can utilize with your miracle points to give you buffs in the game. Some of these buffs include changing your ultimate to giving it a stun ability while doing damage to enemies, making you invincible, making your molotov make enemies more susceptible to critical hit kills, or some options that include getting a 5% discount on some purchases. These types of mechanics are what differentiate Skur Ritual between a traditional COD Zombies game, because while the core gameplay in and of itself is very similar, there are differences that make it unique and, in some aspects, a little bit more fun. You can pick and choose what different miracles you want, what different buffs you want, and kind of tailor make it how you want to play. So some players really like having that critical hit build, and some people really like the things that stun enemies. There's different options, and the more you upgrade your player, the more options you're going to get in the long run getting to tier 3 and tier 4 miracles. Those tier 4 miracles require you to have a certain amount of two different of the gods, 
and they'll basically combine their powers into one. It's really unique and really cool and something fun to work towards while you're playing. These buffs are only active during the game you're playing. They're not persistent. They're not going to keep going through each of the games that you play, but it's something to work towards if you really want to go for high rounds. There's certain setups that you might want to utilize there. It gives you the option and variety of the gameplay. Because while the maps stay unchanged, the way you play each map could vary depending on what type of build you're using. And that's what I really enjoy about Skur Ritual is there is a genuine variety. Now there isn't a ton of weapons here. You have your mystery box type thing which is Lucky the Dog that can give you some weapons and if you're lucky enough it will give you upgraded weapons as well. Your upgrading system works kind of like Cold War. You have up to five tiers of upgrades for weapons. You don't have the rarity of the weapon itself, such as common, rare, legendary, epic, but there's just five base upgrades you can get to your weapon, which I believe do a 20% damage increase, if I'm not mistaken. If that's not correct, just know that you can upgrade your weapon up to tier five to get the most effectiveness out of it. Every time you upgrade your weapon, it's gonna cost more money, Again, very similar to COD Zombies with a lot of the mechanics in this game. Aesthetically, Skur Ritual is a pretty dark and eerie game. If you want to compare it to a COD Zombies game, think of it more in the aesthetic of World at War. That game was had a genuinely creepy vibe. Skur Ritual has one as well. There are some vibrant colors here and there, but for the most part, it's a dark and decrepit world that you are in here. There's different type of boss zombies, some that are just kind of special infected, like one that throws fireballs at you and will explode when killed, similar to like how the one does on Shangri-La in Black Ops 1. And you also have the boss zombies that can spawn periodically, like every five rounds on the first map, Abraham will spawn in, which is a really big, beefy tank character that walks relatively slow but can do a ton of damage to you, so you want to prioritize putting a lot of bullets into him. Typically, the special zombie that's going to spawn every five rounds is also the final boss that you're going to be killing if you do the main quest of each map. So genuinely, with all of the content that we have in Skur Ritual, I feel like $25 is a steal. I'm honestly tempted to buy some of the DLC packs because I just want to support these developers. They've even released a roadmap that includes two extra maps, new weapons, perks, and cosmetics. Everything but the cosmetic DLC is going to be free for any player that purchased the game. So you don't need to spend any extra money to get these two extra maps, these new weapons, these new perks. All of this stuff is going to come later in time down this roadmap. And that is genuinely a breath of fresh air because you don't have any like pay to win mechanics. MW3 Zombies, you can purchase certain operators that are going to give you the option to get more more class kits or something of that nature. Honestly, I haven't played MW3 Zombies in a little while. I never bought the game, but I played during the free weekend. But I know there's certain things you can purchase that will give you upgrades in-game. Whereas in Skur Ritual, everything you purchase is just going to be cosmetic only. There is upgrade paths for your perks, similar to how they were in Cold War. The higher rounds you get, the better materials you get. You can upgrade your perks to be more effective. Your Juggernaug-like perk goes from giving you 20% health increase to a 100% increase. So it incentivizes you to keep playing the game, grind it out a little bit more, so you can get the best upgrades possible, and thus survive a little bit longer. Other things you can do to unlock special rewards in the game is by completing Skur Passes. Very similar to Battle Passes in most of all games, all of the Skur Passes are free. They have between 20 and 50 tiers in each of them, and the more you play the game, the more you'll unlock. You don't need to spend any extra money to get these items. Complete the Easter eggs on the highest difficulty possible. You'll also get cool, unique cosmetics. There is a few things lacking in this game. I would really like some camos to grind for and some just other things that you could work towards to kind of just keep the longevity going. But I think with what we have for what we had to pay, which is $25, this game is genuinely a steal. I'm having a ton of fun playing it. I've been playing it constantly for a couple weeks now, and I really don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I genuinely recommend paying the price of admission for this game. I honestly think if you're a COD Zombies fan that you're gonna have a ton of fun playing Skur Ritual. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Have you purchased the game? Have you tried it? Are you interested? Let's keep this conversation going. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.